Lilies and Lilacs, Episode 17, At the Mercy of the Bandit Lord. Well, it was nice while it lasted. Tessica stormed into the tavern and slammed the door behind her. Shifting tensions slithered through her shoulders and chest, and that particular morning felt so much more vexing. She plopped down at one of the tables and rested her head against it. Zeddy and Bach walked up to her. Mr. Cartwright still doesn't have the stock? No. Ugh, the brewery outside of town can't deliver the shipment of beer because it's too dangerous. And Levin can't spare any of his city guard at the moment because this bastard is striking all over the place. He told me they're even robbing some of the city guard patrols, too. No one is safe, huh? This bandit lord, Shork the Shadow, is pretty well organized. Yeah, he's a real jackass. Mr. Cartwright told me our order is the one being held up at the brewery. Ugh. He said if we were brave enough, we could just go pick it up. Well, would you want to go? Tessica raised her head, and then she looked up at her two friends. What do you mean? Mm, it's not a bad idea. If Levin can't spare any guards, then maybe we can be fine, just the three of us. Zeddy and I are former adventurers, and if we're quick, then maybe we can get back before the bandits get us. Yeah, and if we go rent a couple of horses from the stables, we should be able to go that much faster. Tessica frowned for a moment, and then turned to Morden. Would you be okay to run the tavern until we get back? Yes, ma'am. We still have ten barrels of beer, which should be fine even if we got an unexpected rush. Great. Are you too sure you're fine with escorting me to the brewery? Sure. Let me go get on my old adventurer gear, and I'll be set. <laughs> I always have mine ready to go, just in case. Give us about 20 minutes. Fantastic. Thank you both. Um, I'll get ready too. Tessica went to the kitchen and got her very special frying pan. It wasn't as devastating as Zeddy's fists or Bach's Morningstar, but it certainly saved her during that weird shadow dog invasion. Tessica also donned her brown cloak and put on her leather travel boots. By the time she made it back to the common room, Bach and Zeddy were already ready to go. Bach wore her leather armor, had her helmet on, and she had her morning star hanging from her hip. Her holy symbol dangled from around her neck. Zeddy was dressed in black armor made from lacquered plates. The cuirass she wore was sleeveless, but she wore a burgundy long-sleeved shirt under her armor. Zeddy wore bracers, thigh and loincloth armor, and greaves made from the same material as the cuirass. She also wore boots, too. Zeddy smiled at Tessica. Ah, the mighty cast iron frying pan. The choice weapon of many an adventurer. The magical mighty cast iron frying pan. Thank you very much. <sighs> All right, so I guess we're off then? <laughs> Bye, Morden. Tessica, Zeddy, and Bach strolled out of the tavern and down the street. So, in your experience as out-of-towners, does this sort of thing happen regularly? You mean where a bandit lord rallies a ton of vagrants and thugs and constantly terrorizes a smaller city to maximize their wealth? Yeah. Does that happen often in your experience? With smaller cities like this, I'd say yes. When it happens in larger cities like Black Plains, those bandit lords tend to establish guilds. However, new guilds are often swallowed and devoured by older ones. I will say that this Shork the Shadow is pretty ballsy to act so brazenly. I bet you soon, adventurers are going to be tasked with finding them. I hope they do find him, because all this stealing is ruining our economy. <sighs> Thieves and bandits are the worst. Tessica, Bach, and Zeddy went to the stables and rented two horses for the day. They rode out of Autumn Bliss, <laughs> heading westward to the brewery. Tessica rode behind Zeddy on her horse. It was a fairly dreary day with a natural fog that clung to the ground. The smell of rain was in the air, although it had not started to storm yet. The rides to the brewery took about 20 minutes, and during that time, Tessica gazed at the landscape. To the west of Autumn Bliss were the rolling hills just before the murky and mysterious swamp 
It was quiet, and Tessica didn't see anyone watching them, or any sign of bandits closing in. Still, her heart thumped in her chest. The brewery was an isolated complex all by itself, with a large beer-making facility, a warehouse, and a series of small huts. The whole structure was surrounded by thick stone walls and a sturdy-looking gate. Tessica, Bach, and Zeddy stopped in front of the gate. Hello! Please open up! My name is Tessica Oliver, and I own Lilies and Lilacs. I'm here for my order. After a brief moment of silence, a rock gnome head peered over the edge of the wall. Oh, by the balls of a basilisk! It really is her! Hurry up! Open the gate! The gate slowly opened and a dozen rock gnomes armed with crossbows skipped up to them. They swiftly gestured for Tessica and the others to come in. As soon as they were within the complex, the gate shut behind them tightly once more. One of the rock gnomes, a middle-aged man with thin eyebrows and a fat lower lip, marched up to the three of them. What are you three doing out here? Are you all crazy? The bastard bandit group keeps on making ride-bys to catch travelers and patrols. Wait, they've been riding by here a lot? Yes, we're pretty sure their base is in the nearby area somewhere. They patrol it often enough. They tried to take our brewery, but we gave them a good old rock gnome kiss on the cheek with crossbow bolts. Well, here's for hoping that they leave us alone. Can we get our order of beer? Oh, uh, if you have a wagon, we can hitch the horses up to it. The order for lilies and lilacs. We'll have to load it in a wagon for you. We weren't expecting anyone to come by. Give us half an hour, okay? After an hour, Tessica, Bach, and Zeddy left the brewery. The smell of the coming storm had gotten more intense, and it perfumed the land. Tessica operated the reins, while Bach and Zeddy kept an eye and an ear open for trouble. Thunder rumbled in the distance. Oh, I hope we make it back to town before the rain starts. If we don't get stopped, then we should. Ah, oh, why'd you have to say that? You jinxed us. <laughs> Oops, sorry. What do they call that? Uh, Turfie's Law? If there's a possibility to get randomly attacked by bandits, you will. Hopefully it's not too much to handle. Bach clapped Tessica on the back. We're all powerful individuals with intimidating spirits. All of us. We'll be fine. They rode out of the highlands and Autumn Bliss came into view. For a brief moment, a flighty sense of peace wrapped itself around Tessica's heart. It was a short-lived sensation that died once a horn blew out on the wind. Other similar horn blasts followed it. Isn't that a crock of troll shit? We've got bandits. Damn it, Zeddy. See what you did! <laughs> Tessica urged her horses to gallop faster, but she peeked over at the horde of bandits chasing them. They gained on the wagon and jeered at the trio. Two of the bandits were to the right, one was to the left, and three more were behind. Tessica pulled savagely to the right, and the horses and the wagon slammed into both riders. The bandits' horses tripped over one another, and then they all tumbled to the ground. Whoa! Nice job! The bandit on the left tried to leap on the back of the wagon, but Tessica pulled to the right again. The thief's chin hit the side of the wagon. He struck the ground, and then was crunched under the wagon wheel. One of the others managed to ride up to the back of the wagon. He leapt from his horse and on the barrels of beer. The man carried a drawn sword, and he sneered at the three of them. With expert grace, Zeddy flipped around and stood on top of the barrels. Hold her steady! White-hot panic flared through Tessica's chest as she peered behind her. Zeddy was already dodging and kicking at the armed bandits on the back of the wagon. The other two bandits rode on either side of the wagon. Tessica wrapped the reins around one hand, and she grabbed her frying pan in the other. From the corner of her eye, she saw the bandit to the right ride closer. His body was poised on the horse, and so Tessica prepared herself too. When the man leapt to land on the spot where Zeddy once sat, Tessica timed her strike and then thrust the pan into the man's face. 
His footing landed on the wooden panel, but the edges of Tessica's frying pan hit the bandit in the mouth. The bandit tipped back, and Tessica thrust the pan into his stomach. He fell off of the wagon and got trampled by his own horse. Meanwhile, Buck kept swinging her morning star at the other bandit, who was swinging at her. Here! Tessica held out her pan in front of Buck, and the former adventurer grabbed it. Buck began parrying the man's sword with a pan, as if it were a shield. A man screamed and Zeddy returned to her seat a moment later. Tessica used both of the reins, and she pulled away from the man at the last moment. After he swung, Tessica brought the wagon back into him with so much force, the horse toppled to the ground. Tessica urged her horses to go faster, and they sped off toward Autumn Bliss. Zeddy and Buck yelled, whooped, and hollered in victory. Finally, the time is swiftly approaching. <laughs> In five days, the full moon returns, and with it, the doom of this pathetic city. Salarin stood in the main hall of the Temple of the Fogus, and at the moment, it was empty aside from her. Thousands of candles were lit, and the shadows were cast on the pews and on the giant stone statue of the Fogus. Rather than have a human-like form, the goddess was depicted as a giant slithering mass of tentacles, eyes, and mouths. Salarin gaped up at the effigy of her beloved goddess, fanatical bliss cascading within her being. Soon, my mistress, your manners shall free the conflicted from their mortal distractions, and they will rejoice in your absolute clarity. Salarin laughed out loud again, for her mission was almost done. The other three would be in their places soon as well. Salarin had to pull her own weight for Thefalgus' grand plan to work. Soon, Autumn Bliss would be drowned in madness, and one more lock of the eternal prison would be undone. <laughs>